is prayer, a conversation with God, with the door wide open, partially open, locked and shut. What does prayer look like for you? I hope that you'll be a part of this conversation today as we're talking with God. Too good to not believe 
I've seen cancer disappear I've seen metal plates dissolve But don't you tell me he can do it Don't you tell me he can do it I've seen real life resurrection I've seen mental health restore Don't you tell me he can do it Don't you tell me he can do it I've seen families reunite I've seen prodigals return Don't you tell me he can do it Don't you tell me he can do it I've seen troubled souls that live I've seen addicts find me free Don't you tell me he can do it Come on church Cause I've seen cancer disappear I've seen metal plays this all don't you tell me he can do it Don't you tell me he can do it I've seen real life resurrection I've seen metal hills restored Don't you tell me he can do it Don't you tell me he can do it Cause I've seen families reunited I've seen prodigals return Don't you tell me he can do it don't you tell me he can do it I see troubled souls delivered I see addicts finally free Don't you tell me he can do it Don't you tell me he can do it We'll see cities in revival And salvation flood the streets Don't you tell me he can do it Jesus, Father, in Jesus' name we pray, Father. Amen. Declaring there is hope and there is 
Church, my name is Jennifer Von Essen, and this is your weekly What's Happening Update. We are so excited to have you joining us in person or online this morning. There is so much going on at Sugarloaf this month, so be sure to check our webpage along with our Facebook and Instagram page to keep up with all the latest news and updates. We are currently in an eight-week series called Talking with God. This series will focus on the different portions of the Lord's Prayer as a guide for our own conversations with God. Each week, we will focus on a different aspect of prayer, and each week we will introduce support items that can help you grow your relationship with God through prayer. Check out the series page on our website for all the support items and email us any prayer requests or questions you may have along the way. On January 19th, our Wednesday night dinners are back. Dust off your favorite recipes because this event will be potluck style. Dinner begins at 6 p.m. and after dinner, we will have vision night. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Proverbs 29, 18. Let's come together to hear from Pastor Heather and some of our leadership as we celebrate what God has done, hear about new opportunities to join God in mission, and set the course for 2022. RSVP by January 17th on our website or through the link in your weekly email. All of you parents out there, mark your calendars for Saturday, January 29th from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. We are thrilled to be bringing Becca Gunyon to Sugarloaf so she can walk beside our families in this first ever half day seminar. The cost is $25 per family to attend, which covers a continental breakfast and light lunch. Becca is a parent coach and counselor who helps families learn to communicate in healthy ways and enjoy life together. Childcare is available for this event. So register through our What's Happening page by January 24th. Amigos for Christ is a nonprofit organization that facilitates leadership, water, health, education, and economic development in rural Nicaraguan communities. They work shoulder to shoulder with their Nicaraguan neighbors to bring opportunity to rural communities in need. You can be a part of this mission by participating in the donation drive going on now. Now through February 6th, we will be collecting educational and medical supplies for Amigos for Christ. Two of Amigos' five focuses are education and health. In Nicaragua, only 40% of youth finish high school. Health concerns and poor school conditions contribute to this low graduation rate. By providing medical and educational supplies, we can help this organization make an impact in Nicaragua. You can visit our website to see the full list of items or for more information. If you have any questions, you can email us at info at sugarloaf.org. Well, that's all I have for you this week. I will see you again next week. Now, let's continue to worship together through our tithes and offerings. Let's pray. Generous God, we are reminded through scripture of the spiritual gifts that you give. We know that these are not for us to hold on to, but are gifts for us to share, gifts from you, meant for giving. As we offer our tithes and offerings, prompt us to commit more than dollars, but to see the gifts you have written on our hearts and to share generously of these as well. We pray these words in the name of Jesus, in whose way we follow, for whose love we are eternally grateful. Amen. You can have it all, Lord. Every part of my Take this life and breathe on This heart that is now yours You can have it all, Jesus You can have it all, Lord Every part of my world Take this life and breathe on heart that is now yours and know the joy I found surrendering my crowns at the feet of the King who surrendered 
Father, we lay it all down this morning to you, Father. Our hearts, our lives, our minds. Father, we ask that you come and have your way in our lives. Jesus, you gave it everything. Father, I pray that we acknowledge this morning the presence, the presence and authority that we have in our dear Son, Jesus Christ. We honor you this morning, Jesus. We give you all the praise, all the honor. We glorify the name of Jesus in this place. Come on. Talking with God has many forms, and we began last week with the Lord's Prayer, or the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples when they asked him to teach them to pray. As I said last week, the disciples could have asked Jesus to teach them anything, how to, how to teach, how to preach, how to heal, but what they asked them to teach them was to pray. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to be taking our way, making our way through the Lord's Prayer or the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray as a framework for our own prayer lives and our conversations with God. I think oftentimes we can think of prayer as a, a one-way communication or conversation, talking to God rather than talking with God. But we're going to dig in in these next few weeks and talk about what that two-way communication looks like. Let's pray together as we open God's word. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the invitation to talk with you, to meet with you, to encounter you as we um, posture our hearts and minds and spirits toward you in prayer. 
whether it be in a, a set apart time where we sit down and are quiet or we are walking around talking to you and with you all day. We pray that you would meet us here today, that we might encounter you in your word. Holy Spirit, that you inspired to be written. Would you bring these words to life for us today? It's in Christ's name that we pray it. Amen. Amen. Well, um, as I said, last week we talked about this prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, and it is a sort of framework for our own prayer life. So we're going to walk ourselves through this for the next couple of weeks. And this week I want to talk specifically about prayers of adoration or adoration of God in our uh, prayers. So adoration is kind of a, a big word and one that we don't really use very often um, in um, everyday language, but it really speaks to that element of um, the beginning of this prayer, hallowed be thy name, right? Um, and so adoration, that hallowed be thy name part of the Lord's prayer is, is really about um, uh, the posture of our hearts and lives toward God as we approach God in, um, in prayer. The primary aim of prayer, um, as I've shared already, is relationship, conversation, right? Just like any relationship that we have, um, conversation um, and talking with one another is integral to that uh, relationship. And it's two-way communication, not just one-way communication. Coming to the Father um, in adoration, giving love and affection, if you will, uh, to God. Uh, the first book of common prayer, which um, if you've been in the church for your whole life, you've probably heard that before. It's uh, a very big part of the, the Anglican, the, the, um, the British church, um, but also the, um, just the church in general. It's kind of a grounding text. The book of common prayer um, was, was introduced in the 1600s. Um, in adoration, it defines as the lifting of the heart and mind to God, asking nothing but to enjoy God's presence. Wow, I think that first of all, that speaks to um, recognizing the presence of, of God that is at work and all around us in every part of our lives. So this posture of, of lifting the heart and mind to God and asking nothing but to enjoy God's presence. I know I was on a, a mission trip, I think it was 2006, uh, in the country of Jordan, and we um, got to do some fun things while we were there. We got to travel around. Um, we got to go to Petra, the ancient city of Petra. Um, you might be familiar with that from the Indiana Jones movies. Um, <clears throat> we got to go to the Dead Sea and, and float in the Dead Sea. We got to do a number of fun things as well as the work that we were there to do. But one of the things that we got to do was to spend the night um, in the desert with Bedouins. These, um, these, these people that are on the move, that uh, move from place to place and set up camp out in these wilderness places. So uh, we, we got to spend the night with Bedouins out in the desert. And I will never forget, I mean, first of all, um, it got remarkably cool in the desert at night. We were out under the, the stars, and um, let me just say, there were a lot of warnings about scorpions. There's scorpions out there in the desert. Um, so we had a, a bit of a, a pallet, and then we were in sleeping bags. But um, we're out under the stars in the desert, and um, I just remember looking up, and of course, we're out in the desert, so we don't have all the lights of the city um, to, to defray the light that's out there, the stars that are out there. And I, let me tell you, millions, millions of stars in the sky. It was quite remarkable to see. I couldn't help but think of, of Abraham um, when God showed him uh, the stars in the sky and said that his descendants would be even greater than the stars that he saw in the sky. That is a powerful, powerful uh, image of the awesomeness of God. And that is a means for our adoration of God. Abraham saw how much bigger God was than him. And that's just one of the, the, the illustrations that we see all around us for how much bigger God is than each one of us. In this posture of prayer that we begin with the hallowed be thy name, <clears throat> 
it puts us in our proper place, if you will, in relationship with God. It's the place that we start with, this awe, this awesomeness in our adoration of God. It, uh, it, Pete Grieg, who is known for beginning the 24-7 prayer movement in the UK that has now swept across the globe, you can look it up online, it's profound, they even have a map of all of the places across the globe where there are 24-7 prayer rooms, meaning they're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, uh, and the, the movement that God has done in that movement as people come to God in prayer on a 24-hour cycle. But he, he said this about um, adoration. He said that, that, that adoration, this awesomeness of God, that we posture our hearts in, the, in the, uh, uh, the posture of prayer, is swapping out our microscopes because, my goodness, we often come to God uh, and talk to God about our stuff, right? Um, and that's fine, that's not, that's not wrong. But this, this posture of awe and adoration is one of swapping out our microscopes for telescopes and seeing just how big and wide and high and deep and profound uh, God is in our midst. Swapping out our microscopes for telescopes. The Westminster Catechism, the Shorter Catechism, which was a, a tool that was primarily uh, used for instructing children in the faith um, is composed of a very brief introduction on the end, a, a rule and essence of uh, religion, and 107 questions and answers. It's divided into two parts um, that discuss, number one, the doctrines of the faith, uh, what we are to believe concerning the nature of God and the decrees of God and their executions, and secondly, the duties of a Christian, uh, the duties that the, the Christian is to perform. Uh, as a follower of Jesus. And, and, and it ends with this, that the chief end of humankind, of man, is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. That's it. The chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. That really speaks to this, this posture of awe and adoration that we're called to in the beginning of this prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. I want to kind of give us a, an example in the scriptures of a, a prayer of adoration. And um, as I said before, um, it's not wrong to ask for things. I mean, God wants us to ask, and we'll talk about that in, in the next few weeks as well. Um, but you'll, uh, you'll see in this prayer um, that I'm about to share from scripture that there is a lot more adoration than asking. Um, and so just as an example, I'm in Acts 4, uh, verses 23 to 31, if you want to meet me there. And, um, and this is subtitled in my Bible, The Believers Pray. The Believers Pray. So it says, beginning at verse 23, On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported that the chief priests and the elders had said to them, when they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel uh, in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Wow, I mean, 
uh, that begin by declaring God's mighty acts of recounting to God what they had experienced, what they had been told, even the stories that they'd shared uh, one amongst the other before they ever asked God to act. Now, Lord, consider their threats. Stretch out your hand. Heal and perform signs and, and wonders on our behalf as we implore you. There is this, this, this posture that they have of, of, of adoring and, and standing in awe of God, recounting God's acts, declaring those acts be brought to life again in the midst of their particular situation, and then ending with praise of God once again. As a result, it says, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. God moved. God moved acted. What does it look like to adore God in prayer in your own life? I think the scriptures, because they, they recount many of them here, the scriptures are a great place to start in our adoration of God. The heavens declare the glory of God, the mighty works of God. Um, even as we talked about the stars and the sky, all of creation testifies to the glory of God and the awesomeness of God. I, I actually found a, um, um, someone recently who wrote a whole book called Adore, and it's all about praying through the scripture and adoration of God. Her name's uh, Sarah Haggerty, and, and we'll share the link to her, um, her, to her website below. Um, but she, she lists prayers of, of adoration. She did a series of um, Instagram lives, praying through passages of scripture um, in adoration of God, specific to her life, specific to what she was feeling or even the community around her was feeling um, and experiencing, just as the disciples did here, praying God's word back to God in adoration and in recognition of God's awesomeness and power in relationship to who we are. Um, one wonderful resource that she had were really monthly scriptures that she posted uh, for adoration and prayer that have been um, remarkably helpful for me. So I hope that you will check that out. Um, one of the things that, um, one of the Psalms that I think we could all <laughs> benefit from reading again and again is Psalm uh, 46, uh, verse 10, reminds us to be still and to know that I am God. Uh, just as, as God shared with Abraham to, to look at the stars, just as God shared with Moses that he was the I am, the great I am, uh, just as the scriptures testify from beginning to end, the awesomeness and the power of God, so too are we called in our prayer to, to recount and proclaim the awesomeness and the power of God in our adoration. As we look forward to, to next week and what um, we'll be talking about, we'll be talking about those, those asks, those petitions, and then intercession. And um, maybe you've had some prayers that haven't been answered. You felt like that door that is an open door to conversation with God is, is locked and shut. I hope you'll join us as we continue this series next week. And we have more tools, more resources that we are sharing with you on our website. So I hope that you'll take a look at those and, um, and get excited about a, um, an online course that we're offering as well in regards to these forms of prayer, these tools that God has given us to meet with him, to have conversation, and to strengthen the relationship that we have been invited to be a part of. Let me pray for us as we close out today. Almighty God, creator of the heavens and the earth, the earth is full of your glory. May we continue to testify to the awesome God that you are. God, as we come to you this week, seeking to meet with you in conversation, would you meet with us? Would you speak to us by the power of your Holy Spirit in those still and quiet moments? 
as we are still and know that you are God? Would you speak to us through your word by the power of your Holy Spirit as we open your word, as we study, as we read? God, we thank you that you want to be in this relationship with us. We are, uh, we are but a, a breath on the wind, and yet you've given us that breath. You are awesome. We love you, and we thank you for this opportunity to be in conversation and relationship with you. We ask and pray that you would meet us in that conversation. In Christ's name, amen.